Tennessee Titans on the road to take on the Buffalo Bills this week. Four and two now after stopping a brief two-game skid. Across the goal line and he's in for a quarterback sneak touchdown for Buffalo. Josh Allen swaggers into this one off a nice showing and with a nice new WR1. The Bills trading for Amari Cooper, who's ready to see what it's like to play for a real quarterback. I mean, a real good quarterback. Doesn't have great numbers in 2024 for obvious reasons. His resume, though, speaks for itself. First the goal, fake to form it. There it is. Watch an end zone touchdown, Cooper! Allen in Buffalo's most recent win, 19-25 passing, 8.6 yards per attempt, two touchdowns, no INTs, a rating over 125, and he did that against a very tough Jets secondary. Allen, he's at Ray Davis, comes up with the catch at midfield. Holy mackerel! While this matchup may seem lopsided, Allen does take on another tough secondary, tough defense, really. Tennessee is th in points per game allowed, top five good on third down and in the red zone. Of two back to the four. Goodness gracious. And when it comes to passing attacks, Tennessee's holding quarterbacks to an 82.9 rating, tied for 10th lowest. They held Joe Flacco to a measly five yards per attempt, picked him off sub-80 rating. Titans first interception of the year, Hamani Hooker. Titans pass rush, Allen will try and dodge. Zero sacks week six, only have nine on the year. Allen has only taken eight sacks in his six games, faced an average pressure rate. Bills got back wide receiver Khalil Shakir last week, just 19 yards. No Buffalo receiver comes in with eye-popping stat sheets. Four guys had 25 to 55 yards versus the Jets. Dalton Kincaid, Allen's most targeted guy, 51 yards. Here's Kincaid, first down Buffalo. Titans, for what it's worth, holding tight ends to a 74 rate, fifth lowest. They also have to play the run well based on Buffalo's latest showing, and they've done so, holding running backs to the third lowest yard per carry average at 3.3. And he's blown up. This Tennessee defense was not fooled. Will they face James Cook? Have to see if he's back this week. He was out hurt. If not, they get Ty Johnson, Ray Davis. Johnson, eight and a half yards per carry on four tries. Davis, 97 yards, 4.9 per run. It goes to Davis, and back he goes inside the one. Ground game, the respectable aspect to Tennessee's offense right now. Bill's defense gets Tony Pollard, 93 yards, five and a half yards per carry, a touchdown last week. He could keep it going if Buffalo doesn't fix some things with their run defense. They gave up 113 yards, 6.3 a run to Brees Hall. Brees Hall took off! First and goal, Jets at the three! If that's not incentive to run all game, this is. Pollard averaged 5.5 per rush attempt. Will Levis averaged 3.5 per pass attempt versus the Colts. Boyd again, right on cue, gets his second straight catch. 95 yards. Their passing attack, the primary reason, they are 30th on third down, 21st in points per game. This ball dies, but very fortunate that that wasn't another interception. Levis targeted Calvin Ridley eight times, didn't complete one pass to him. Ridley was targeted eight times. That does not mean the ball actually ended up anywhere near the guy. Yeah, you're right, Matt. That was just a terrible throw. It really was. D-hop 54 yards at least, rare for a guy to account for more than 50% of his QB's yards. Wide open, Hopkins, and Levis hit him perfectly. Making last week's dud even more extraordinary, Levis didn't take a sack and didn't face a high pressure rate. Bill's pass rush comes in off a three-sack trek. Should have been four. Throw a foul, roughing the passer, defense, number 57. Yeah, I don't like the call at all. Jets Bills refs, we have Randy Marsh on line one. He has some great ideas on how to make the game safer. Buffalo secondary came up with an INT of Rodgers, gave up two touchdowns, one that Hail Mary close to 300 yards because of it. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. Good call, touchdown Jets. Bills pass defense though has been a strength overall, holding quarterbacks to a sub 90 rate this season, under seven yards per attempt. Okay, before we get out of here, a little investigation for you. Gotta talk to Titans fans about JC Latham and his five sacks allowed. First, so you know in this case I didn't mess it up, and hey man, I'm not AI, so it happens. Not this time though, five sacks allowed. Saw all the protests though from the fans. I thought since I don't watch a JC Latham ISO cam each week, let's take a look. See the five bags Next Gen Stats blames him for. Here's the first, week one versus Chicago. Pretty clear he gets beat, Taylor sacks the quarterback. Finally chased down by Daryl Taylor. Number two, and this is the best one versus the Jets. I mean, yes. 
The guy Latham was blocking does get the sack. Levis tripped. He tried to shovel it. But no, that's not on Latham. That ball is free. Jets have it. Week three says he gave up three to Green Bay pass rushers in one game, first to Luke Van Ness. Lucas Van Ness. Gets beat wide and it's Van Ness who finishes the job, so that's two. Then go to the fourth quarter, Latham versus Preston Smith. Preston Smith there to bring him down. Okay, Levis rolls away from pressure into the sack, but Smith gets chipped and then Latham doesn't do much to slow him down. I get both arguments, I guess. Last one gives up one to Devontae Wyatt. And Levis goes down for the sixth time today. Devontae Wyatt. I don't know about that one. Levis held the ball a long time, saw where the pressure was coming from, and he didn't get rid of it. I'm going to say three sacks allowed in my book. I'm here for you guys, so when you speak up on something, I'll always do what I can. Hit the comments with your thoughts on that and the game, of course. Panel of 10 has no takes on Latham, but they have 10 score predictions.